Today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the Grashof law. It's mainly related to the four bar mechanism. Uh, the four bar mechanism is one of the simplest, uh, if it, it's not the simplest mechanism, because it has the least number uh, of elements of links and also it uses only uh, revolute or pin joints and pin joints are kind of uh, simple uh, kinematic pairs. So today uh, at the end you will be uh, able to stay to tell what is the Grashof law. This is the first thing but uh, most important is to use the Grashof law to predict the behavior of a four bar mechanism. To tell if a four bar mechanism uh, depending on the length of bars, if it is a uh, double crank, uh, crank rocker or double uh, rocker. Uh, I'm going to go back to this uh, terminology, to this uh, definitions, uh, what is a crank and what is a rocker. So at the end of this lecture, you will be able, uh, knowing uh, the lengths of bars, the lengths of links, to predict the behavior of uh, four bar mechanism or the opposite also if you uh, you want to desire uh, or uh, a certain behavior uh, a double crank mechanism for example you will be able to choose the suitable set of uh, bar lengths so uh, first I'm going to insist a little bit uh, what are cranks what are rockers? What is the difference between them? Uh, uh, okay, the similarities and the differences. Once we have these two definitions, I can go to uh, explain what is the Grashof condition or the Grashof law. Uh, okay, and at the end, of course, we will have some examples. So first, let's see, uh, okay, uh, cranks and rockers. Now cranks and rockers uh, are mainly bars or rotating elements, rotating uh, links in a mechanism or when I say mechanism I can also say linkage. So they are rotating elements or bars in a mechanism. Both will have, we will have, they will have fixed axis rotation. So cranks, rockers, are bars that have fixed axis rotation. There is some extension in the definition in some literature. They, they, they consider even general motion uh, any bars that can have any rotation. But let's focus on this uh, specific definition. I, I would like this one. So cranks and rockers that are links of a mechanism that have fixed axis rotation. So they will have they, are, they will be links. They will have a pin connection with the ground. So they're first connected to the ground. Then they're connected to the ground with a turning or revolute kinematic pair. So this is the similarity between the two. Now, the difference is that a crank can complete a full revolution. It can complete a 360 degree revolution. There is no angle or position angle which is uh, banned for for the crank. The crank can go to any angle, can have any angle, there is no constraint on its motion. Okay? So when rotating the crank we cannot, okay, there is no constraint in the mechanism that will prevent it to go to a certain position. And mostly, cranks go in a smooth, continuous way. Will, the angle will be always increasing like this one. So it goes 300 and, uh, 0 to 360 degree without any interruption. There is no uh, limitation on the range of motion, okay? Now, if we, for example, see the extremity 
of uh, the bar, it will draw, if you follow just the, the extremity of uh, the crank or the bar, it will draw a perfect circle. Okay? So here we will have a perfect circle uh, with no uh, gap. It's, it's a complete 360 degree circle. Okay? This is, if you follow the, the point B, which is the end or the extremity of the bar. Also, if we uh, draw all the positions of the crank, it will here make a complete circular surface. We will have here a complete circular surface, also with no uh, interruption here or a gap. So there is no angle which is which which uh, the in which the to which the 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 bar cannot go. There is no limitation on the angle when the bar is rotating. This is the opposite of a rocker. The rocker is limited in range. It can go only in a certain part of the circle. It cannot complete the 360 degree revolution. Okay? So, for example, here it will go only the, for example, from uh, 30 degree to uh, approximately maybe 140 degree or 160 degree. Uh, higher than, uh, for example, it cannot go, for example, to angles uh, 180 degree and more. Uh, there is some constraint in the mechanism that will ban or uh, make that the, the rocker cannot go to some, some angles. So, in that case, the rocker can only go back and forth. It will have only an isolatory rotation. It cannot complete and go smoothly along the whole rotation angle. And this is very important to know in your four bar mechanism. If the angle it is a crank, or if the body is a crank or a rocker, and this will define how you will manage the input and how you will manage the output. And sometimes uh, you need to transform a, a crank to a rocker. Sometimes it's the opposite. Uh, sometimes uh, the motion it is available. It's a rocker. Uh, but you, you need just uh, to uh, take it uh, to another place, but you keep it the same, so you need uh, a rocker-rocker mechanism. Uh, sometimes it's a crank-crank, so you need to be aware of uh, the type of motion in, in your far bar mechanism, so uh, you can design it in you're in the required way. So here again, if I follow just the, the end of the rocker, it will complete only an arc of the circle. It can complete only a part of the circle. It cannot draw the, the whole circle. If I will uh, attach a uh, a pen at the end of the rocker and, and, and make a paper, it cannot complete the full circle. And again, if I will uh, see the, uh, all positions and draw them one by one, here I will have just a sector or a part of the circular surface. I cannot have the full uh, circular surface. Now, this is for, for a simple bar. Now, what will happen in, uh, for the four bar mechanism? Now, in a four bar mechanism, I have, okay, four links. One of them is the ground, and three are moving. Now, can I predict what will be the motion of uh, the bars? 
if the motion of the bars is it all of them are rotating okay so all of them are candidates to be a rocker or or a crank not all of them two of them the two that are connected to the ground in joint so this in this four bar mechanism these two bars or links that are connected to the ground which mostly be one in the input and the out, one uh, and the other the output are they going to be a crank or are they going to be a rocker the Grashof condition give us a certain rule to find out depending on the length of bars if this input or output will be a crank or a rock okay so we are going to see what tells exactly the Grashof condition so I will consider here uh, a four bar mechanism a general one so I don't know until now uh, which one is the ground so I, I I'm not good I'm going to do some inversions later so inversions recalling what we have seen last time it's it's grounding different links so I, I'm drawing here all all the links now uh, I will consider first s I will note as the length of the shortest link so I will consider take the shortest link and make its length as uh, as s also I will take the longest one I will uh, measure it and uh, this measure will correspond to L and I will give P and Q to the two others in any order doesn't matter okay uh, which one is connected to S or to L to the longest one it, it doesn't matter so we have a four bar mechanism uh, I know the length of each one of each bar of each link and I will uh, denote S the shortest length L the longest length and P and Q the two others in any order no problem now what tells the dash of condition is that if I add S plus L if I add the shortest link to the longest link together and I find that they are lower or equal to the sum of the two others to P plus Q okay now if S plus L sum of the shortest link and the longest link is lower or equal then P plus Q the sum of the length is of the two other links in that case what tells the Grashof condition it tells that at least one link can accomplish can make a full 360 degree, degree revolution so here if this condition is valid I know that at least one link is undergoing at least one link can have a 360 degree rotation okay which link I don't know until now now if this condition is true the mechanism now it's called the Grashof okay if S plus L is lower or equal than P plus Q the mechanism is a Grashof for bar mechanism. it means it it fulfill the Grashof condition and at least I have one which is one which is we can complete a full revolution motion at least for one link there will be no limitation in the range of angle it can have any rotational angle okay if it is Grashof it means <coughs> <coughs> sorry 
If it is Grashof, it means there is at least one link uh, that can make one for revolution independent of any inversion, independent of, uh, of uh, uh, any link that can be the ground. So until now, I didn't talk uh, which one is the ground and which one uh, is the input or which one is the coupler and so on. Okay. Now, in the opposite, if S plus L are together higher than P plus Q, now here I am sure that all cannot have a full revolution motion. So all links, all the three moving links here, again, independent of any inversion, independent of which link is the ground, all links will go only back and forth. All links will oscillate. So if it is Grashof, I have at least one, which is can make full revolution. If it is non-Grashof, okay, uh, for example, let's take this one. If it is non-Grashof, okay, none of them will make full revolution. All of them will just go back and forth. All of them will uh, will oscillate. Okay? So this is the first uh, or the, the, the general Grashof condition independent of any inversion. Now let's see and, uh, what is the effect of the inversion. What is the effect of the position of the ground of or the link that is considered the ground so now i will here differentiate if it is a grash off i will have three cases okay if it is a grash off i will have three cases depending on the position of the shortest link. So, the shortest link is the one who is governing the motion of the four bar mechanism. The first case here, okay, the shortest link is the, in this inversion, I have considered that the shortest link is the ground. So the shortest link is fixed. Now, in this case, we will have a double crank mechanism. Why? Because the two links here, the blue one and the pink one here, can undergo the full uh, 360 degree revolution. Let's see, for example, if this is A and this is B, this is C, and this is, for example, D. Okay. Now, in this case, now C, the path of C is a complete circle. The path of D is a complete circle here, the purple one. C will undergo uh, and uh, can trace, can draw a full circle here, the blue one. So here we have two cranks. Uh, this one, the red one, which is here, the coupler, the, the coupler is the link which is opposite to the ground. Now the coupler here also can undergo a full a 360 degree revolution, but it has a general motion, so I will not consider it as a crank, okay? So here the crank, uh, one will be the input, and another one will be the output. So I'm just transforming a crank to another crank, uh, okay, I'm just moving it from one place to another, or uh, changing velocity or, or something, okay? So, here, the case one, if it, it is a Grashof four-bar mechanism, 
So it is S plus L lower or equal to P plus Q. And I have the shortest link, the ground, the grounded or the frame. Okay. Now, in this case, I will have the input and output are cranks, and it is called here a double crank mechanism. So this one, it is double crank Grashof four bar mechanism. Double crank Grashof four bar mechanism. If it is double crank, it can only be a Grashof. We cannot have double crank non Grashof, okay? So this is just uh, a comment. Now, the second case is when the input or output is a crank, uh, is the shortest link. It means that the shortest link is adjacent or connected to the ground. It doesn't matter if, okay, here the ground is the longest link or not but what is important here all depend on the position of the shortest link all depend if the shortest link is connected here to the ground with a pin joint okay with a revolute or turning kinematic pair okay so here if i have this case that uh, the shortest link is not the ground but is directly connected to the ground with of course a pin joint a pin kinematic pair now in this case it is a crank rocker mechanism why because the shortest link will be a crank and the other one will be the rocker the other one here the red one it cannot complete a full uh, revolution so here again if i will make a uh, b and c and d the point d the extremity of the shortest link can draw a full circle but c the uh, extremity of the end of the red bar here can only draw an arc of circle. It cannot make a full 360 degree revolution. It's limited in a certain range. So it, the, the red bar here can only take some position, cannot go to some other position. The, the angle range is limited. This is called a crank rocker mechanism. Now here, we can have this the input the other one the output of the opposite it depends on what is required by by the mechanism always uh, we have between the input and output the coupler the coupler is always the opposite to the ground the coupler here uh, okay can all here uh, mostly will be uh, also cannot make a full 360 degree revolution now, the last case of a Grashof mechanism is when the shortest link is the coupler. When the shortest link is opposite to the ground. When the shortest link is not directly connected to the ground. Here also, does it doesn't matter if this is the longest or not. Uh, which one is the longest, it doesn't matter. Now, here, if... The only condition is that, okay, it is a Grashof, so I have S plus L lower or equal to P plus Q, and that the shortest link is, is the coupler. Now, if this is the case, I have double rockers. The input and output will be rockers. They cannot both make 360 degree revolution but what tells is that here Grashof if it is Grashof at least I have one link so here for example this one uh, 
at least one link should make full 360 degree revolution. In this case, it is it is the coupler who makes the 360 degree revolution. If it is Grashov, we have always the shortest link that can undergo the 360 degree revolution. But here it's, it, it, it has a general motion, so I cannot uh, name it as, as a crank. Okay, so that's why it is a double rocker, double rocker, four bar mechanism. But it is here, it's Grashov. It is a double rocker, Grashov, four bar mechanism. So, if S plus L is lower or equal to P plus Q, I have a mechanism, I have three cases. If the shortest link is the ground, so it is a double crank. If the shortest link is directly connected to the ground, it is adjacent to the ground, it is a crank rocker, and the shortest link is the crank. Now, uh, the third case, if the shortest link is the coupler, we have a double rocker uh, mechanism. Now, if we are in a, in a non-Grashoff, okay, it's non-Grashoff now. So S plus L is higher than P plus Q. Now it will be only uh, we have only one case. It's a double rock, so all will be double rock. But here again, the uh, the difference between case three of Grashov and the non-Grashov is in the motion of the coupler. Okay, in a non-Grashov double rocker mechanism, this one, the coupler can go only back and forth. It cannot complete a full 360 degree revolution. But in case of three here, it is, yes, it's a double rocker, but the coupler can make a full 360 degree revolution. Okay. So this is the only difference between the double rocker Grashoff and the double rocker uh, non Grashoff. So these are uh, the four cases of a four bar mechanism. So base it on the length of bars and base it what on the position of the shortest link, we can have a prediction or we can predict what type of motion will have a four bar mechanism. So let's recall uh, this main results. So if you have a four bar mechanism, first you need to collect the uh, lengths of bars and now which is uh, the shortest, the longest and so on. Then you need to see this inequality. You need to compare uh, S plus L and uh, P plus Q. You need to compare them. Now if this inequality it's not true, if uh, S plus L is higher than P plus Q, it's not true. So it's non Grashoff. And if it is non Grashoff, of course, it is a 100% double rocker. Now, the opposite. If this inequality is valid, is true, if S plus L is lower or equal than P plus Q, so this is a Grashoff. Now, if it is Grashoff, I need to see. Uh, if the shortest bar is the ground or not, so I we need to see where is the position of the shortest link. So if it is the ground, it is a double crank. Now, if it is not the ground, I need to see if it is the coupler or not. So if it is the coupler, it is double rocker. And if it is not the coupler, it is a crank rock. So we have here the four cases. The non of double rocker, I will have the crash of double crank, the crash of double rocker, and the crash of uh, crank rocker. Now, I insist that 
the difference between the non Grashof double rocker, this one, and the Grashof here. Double rocker is in the motion of the coupler. This one in the non Grashof double rocker, the coupler has an oscillatory motion it can go all the way back and forth and in the Grashof double rocker the coupler can go 360 degree revolution okay so here let's consider this first example so i have this four bar mechanism and uh, for example i have the ground here it's five units five centimeter uh, five decimeter and so on a any unit of length here it can be it doesn't matter uh, five inches or it doesn't matter just five units uh, the red one here has 12 units of length the coupler will have 10 and uh, the green one will have uh, nine units so uh, I will ask you to think a little bit to say if it is Grashof or not and uh, what type of motion if it is double rocker double crank or crank rocker the, sh the shortest link is is five the longest is 12 so if we add them together we'll make 17 and uh, if i will add the two others it will make 19 and if i will compare and 19 uh, s plus l here is lower than uh, the two others together okay so it is grashov as the shortest link is the ground. Uh, we have a double crank uh, mechanism. Okay, so let's okay uh, see the mechanism to be sure. Okay, here folks on the green and uh, red bars, and even the pink one. All of them here, as it is Grashof, and the shortest bar uh, are. as it is Grashof and the shortest part is the ground, uh, all of them can accomplish uh, a full 360 degree revolution, even the, the, the coupler one, okay? Uh, so, for example, let's now trace the, the extremity of the two cranks and we'll see here that both of them are can can make 360 degree revolution so here uh, i'm just rotating the mechanism and just drawing each time the, the the extremity of the bar so here you see that both extremities uh, will accomplish a, uh, a full 360 degree revolution just increase it okay i i consider it exactly the same mechanism but I increased the length of the ground by a uh, by three so now the ground is eight and not five so in this case it will be non Grashof why because 12 plus 8 will make 20 and now 20 is higher than 19 now it is a double rocker now now let's explain a little bit why it is why it is a uh, triple rock Let's focus on the first part. So as I have a six bar mechanism, it's a kind of two bar, two, four bar mechanism. So if I focus on the first part, the left part, what I will have here, I have a four bar mechanism so I can apply the, the Grashof condition because the Grashof condition is only for the four bar mechanism. Okay. Now, uh, this left part actually corresponds to our first example. We have 5, 9, 12, 10, except that, okay, uh, uh, not exactly more or less the same. No, except that now the longest bar is the coupler. This is the only difference with the first example, but this does not affect a lot the motion. So, in the left part here, okay, it is a Grashof. And it is a double crank, isn't it? I will say that, okay, this one and this one are 
should be cranks. So both of them can complete a full 360 degree rotation. Here I will go to the other one, to the other four bar mechanism, this one, for example, okay. Okay, this one. Yes, this one, this four bar mechanism, the, the right one. Now, if it is, uh, if we look to the dimensions here, it corresponds to the second example. And it is non Grashof. So if it is non Grashof, I will have that, okay, all will be rockers. So nine will be rockers, and four will be rocker. So here I, I need to consider for four the worst condition. From the left side, it can it can go to the complete four 360 degree revolution. But from the right side, it cannot. The worst case here, it's it cannot. So if I have this case, it will be a rocker. So nine will be a rocker. Uh, the link 6 will be a rocker, the link EF will be a rocker, and the link CD will be a rocker. Now, if they are both rocker, now here too, it's, it's said a crank, but it cannot be crank unless 4 be a crank. It will complete the full 360 degree revolution only in the case it cannot complete it without, without link 4. Now, if 4 is constrained, 2 will be constrained too. So here also it will be a crank. So